Howdy again everyone, and today I've finally gotten my hands on one of these new Viltrox lenses that everyone's been getting excited about, the Viltrox AF 33mm f1.4 STM. This is the version for Fuji X system cameras, but it's also due to come out on Canon EOS M and Sony E-mounts too, which is pretty good news. This and a couple of other similar lenses were announced by Viltrox a little while ago, and people are excited about it because it's a fully electronic lens with autofocus and camera controlled aperture, but which only costs less than 300 US dollars, or around 260 pounds here in the UK. If the lens is any good, then that could be a great deal. It covers an APS-C sized image sensor, so in full frame terms, it's more like a standard 50mm lens, which is a lovely focal length, giving you a good emphasis on your subject while remaining just about wide angle enough to get the bigger picture in too. That is one of the most popular focal lengths available, and an aperture as wide as f1.4 means that the lens lets in plenty of light for shooting in darker situations, and can give you some very nice out of focus backgrounds. It'll be a big creative step upwards for anyone who's been using just a standard zoomable kit lens with their camera. I'd like to thank Viltrox for loaning me a copy of this lens for testing, although as usual, this is a totally independent review, I'll be looking at both its strengths and its weaknesses. Let's look at the lens itself. It comes in a beautifully designed box, and its build quality is lovely, with its body made almost entirely of metal. It weighs 270 grams. It's all based on a metal lens mount. There's no weather sealing gasket to be seen here, but there is a USB port for potential firmware upgrades in the future, which is always an encouraging sign. Next comes an aperture ring, always good to see on a third party lens. Viltrox took the unusual decision here to make the aperture ring turn completely smoothly without any clicks, except when you turn the ring all the way over into automatic mode. On my Fuji X-T20 camera, unfortunately that smooth turning aperture ring didn't translate into entirely smooth aperture control while shooting video, but perhaps it would in newer Fuji cameras, and my guess is that it probably will on Sony cameras when an E-mount version comes along. If some person in the future manages to try that out for me, then please say something in the comments down below. Next comes a focus ring, which turns wonderfully smoothly, and it's quite responsive when you do so. Another nice thing about it is that the lens displays virtually no focus breathing as you change focus, and that could be useful for video makers. The lens's autofocus motor is almost silent, although if you're shooting video, then your camera's microphone will pick up a slight whirring sound. It's pretty quick and confident enough, although it sometimes tutters a little bit at the final stage of locking on to your subject. The lens comes with a metallic lens hood, which is always something I love to see. It feels lovely and fits onto the lens perfectly. The filter thread size is 52mm wide. Overall, top marks for build quality here, it feels well made and really solid in your hand, although I would have preferred an aperture ring with clicks on it to help me navigate my settings while shooting. But more important than any of that is image quality, as I mentioned, I tested it on my Fuji X-T20. That may be an older camera, but its 24 megapixel sensor is still pretty relevant for today. Straight from f1.4, we see quite a lot of resolution and detail in the middle of the image, and good contrast too, but we also see some notable purple fringing on strongly contrasting edges. Corner image quality is definitely softer, but I have seen worse than this before. Stop down to f2, and there's not much change in the corners, but the middle of your images look fantastic now. f2.8 sees perfection in the middle of your images, and your image corners will look a little clearer now too. f4 is slightly better again in the corners, and at f5.6, image quality is excellent across the entire picture frame. The image stays this sharp down to f11, although if you stop down to f16, we will see some softness emerging due to the unavoidable effects of diffraction. So for a lens at this price point, the Viltrox 33mm gives us nothing to seriously complain about, in fact it's pretty nice and sharp. 
its image quality really is virtually the same as Fuji's old XF 35mm f1.4 lens, which will cost you about $200 more, so from that perspective, Filtrox have done a great job. Now let's take a look at distortion and vignetting. As I've mentioned, this lens is being tested on a Fuji camera. If you shoot in JPEG mode, then you'll see some pincushion distortion and a bit of vignetting at f1.4, nothing to lose your mind over though. If you're shooting in RAW mode, then vignetting seems a little more noticeable, as you can see here. You need to stop down to f2.8 to see even a slight brightening in those corners, and vignetting is still slightly visible at f5.6, so it's a below average performance for distortion and vignetting here, but not a disastrous one. Now let's take a look at close up image quality. The lens can focus down to 30cm to your subject, not very close at all really, so it won't be mistaken for a macro lens. But the good news is that close up image quality remains about as sharp as at normal focal distances, so that's helpful at least. Now let's see how the lens performs against bright lights. We see a bit more flaring and glaring than usual here, not a particularly great performance. And while we're shooting in the dark, let's take a quick look at this lens's coma levels. Coma is when bright points of light in the corners of your image look a bit smeared, and at f1.4 we can see the telltale signs of it on that red light in the distance. Stop down to f2 and the effect is reduced, and at f2.8 it's virtually gone. Next, let's see about bokeh. At f1.4, this lens can get your backgrounds pretty nice and out of focus, and those out of focus backgrounds are averagely soft. The deeper they are out of focus, the softer the quality of its bokeh seems to get. And related to bokeh is longitudinal chromatic aberration. It's rather strong on this lens. At f1.4, we see magenta and blue highlighting in out of focus backgrounds. Even stop down to f2.8 or f4, the problem is still there, although at f5.6, it's finally gone away. So then, what can we say overall? This Filtrox lens is enjoyable to use, I certainly loved its build quality. In terms of its optics, it's pretty good, although not quite a miracle machine. Its main advantages are that it can get you really nice sharp pictures, even at f1.4, at a much lower price than Fuji's official 35mm f1.4 lens, which isn't really a much better optic, and the Viltrox is at a slightly lower price than Sigma's 30mm f1.4 lens on Sony E and Canon EOS M cameras. That makes it quite a good deal. It certainly has a few image quality issues hidden away there, but none of them are anything to really complain about at this sort of price point. I think that most people who buy this lens will be pretty delighted with the images they get from it and the value for money that it offers as a good quality, fully electronic lens. Therefore, it has to come recommended.